My name is Barrett, Assistant Sheriff, Los Angeles County. While it is the duty of all peace officers to apprehend the guilty, we have the very same obligation to see that none but the guilty is punished. Where even the possibility of doubt exists, fully as much time is devoted, as many personal risks taken, to prove the innocence of a suspect. The exciting story of old Joe Sontag, which you're about to witness, is an exact case in point. Okay, Joe. Sergeant, I swear I never killed nobody. Honest, I'm telling the truth. I just found that gun last night. Go on, Joe. Well, you see, when I find this gun, I figure that I'll hock it. Then I see this guy coming out of the bellboy bar, and I got the gun in my hand. I don't know why I did it, but I stuck the gun in his back and grabbed the wallet. Now, where's the rest of the 22,000? All I got was maybe 200. 22,000? That's what was in the payroll, Joe. The same one this money came from. The one you stole after you killed that cookie. I'm, I'm telling you the truth, but you'll never believe me. Believe me, you got the wrong guy. You want the fellow who I stuck up, don't you see? All right, Joe, then tell us who he is. Wouldn't I tell you if I knew? I seen this guy in the bellboy face flashing a roll. He's with Gina. Gina? Who's Gina? Gina McKetty. She's one of the dames works in the bellboy. You know, a, a bee girl. This wallet you claim you stole. If it wasn't on you, where is it now? Well, then I, then I come down here. I figured I'd ditch it. I, I figured I'd chuck it in the ocean. And did you chuck it into the ocean? No, that's the funny thing. I'm ducking around behind the fish and chips place when I see their incinerator burning. Well, burning's better than ditching it where it might come, you know, float to the top sometime. So I tossed the leather into the incinerator. I'm telling the truth. You don't believe me, do you? Right now, Sontag, no. Okay, Art. Well, it could have been a wallet once. Could have been a lot of things. But all it is now is a handful of sticky, burned up nothing. You see, Lieutenant, I told you. Yes, Joe, you told me. But what I want now is for the crime lab to tell me what this is. That's what counts, after all. It took another hour, but with Sontag in custody and Lieutenant Byrne having gone back to the crime lab, Sergeant Zavala found Gina Marchetti questioned her, tried to have her identify a picture for him in the mug book, then, almost in desperation, escorted the young lady to the pier in the faint hope she might see the man she had picked up last night and point him out to the sergeant. You uh, see him down there, Miss Marchetti? The sun don't help, sergeant. I don't get out in it very much. Try over there, shady pipe. He's wearing one of them sailor suits. I wouldn't know him anyway. Last night, like I told you, he was all dressed up. But you are sure he works down here on the waterfront? Sure, who's sure? All I know is this guy comes over and he says, hey, Vince, you want me to drive you back down to the boat? Well, then, uh, it does stand to reason he works down here at the harbor, doesn't it, Mr. Marquette? Look, honey, you're the detective. You put two and two together if you want. Me, I just want to get home and get a few hours sleep before I got to go back to work again. Let's try the other side. If you don't see him there, we'll drive you back home. Well, thank you, Dick Tracy. Say, uh, you ought to do that more often. You're cute when you laugh. <laughs> Don't see him, huh? Not even now, after I got used to the sun. Did you ever think of something? If this guy did what you think he did, he could be on a boat right now, halfway to Mexico. I've thought of it, Miss Marchetti. 
And uh, I don't like the thought any more than you like being out in broad daylight. Come on, we'll take you home. Okay. Let's go, Wendy. That's it, huh? Well, as I said, I went back to the bellboy, had a talk with the night manager. What did he contribute? These three $20 bills he took in last night, and the serial numbers match. In all likelihood, the man was in the bellboy last night. Well, at least that's something to go on. Oh, and as a matter for the record, Lieutenant, I had to trade three of my own to get hold of those bills. Any guy with 60 bucks cash shouldn't be in the sheriff's department. I'll write you about you later. I'll remind you, Lieutenant. Oh, I came down because I wanted to tell you. That gun we took from Sontag was a 32. Ballistic says that slug that killed the bookkeeper came from a 45. Well, that may make old Joe Sontag feel better, but it won't do much for the bookkeeper. What about what we dug out of the incinerator? Was it a wallet? It had been once. Crime Lab found not one thing identifiable. Except a charred piece of scrap paper that once had some numbers written on it in indelible ink. Here, what do you make of it? R12, L13, 0. Sounds like a combination. The only way you can definitely prove Sontag's innocent is to find the rest of the money and get a slug from that 45 for comparison. I'll buy that, Lieutenant. That is with your permission. Okay, Art. And here's a little fatherly advice. The man you're looking for killed once. He'll probably try it again if he thinks you're out to tag him. He's got to see me first, Lieutenant. No, first you've got to see him. Thanks, Lieutenant, and I don't mean for just the cigarettes. <laughs> Who'd ever figured that the day would come when Joe Suntag would thank a cop? <laughs> and believe me, I never forget a favor. Memory, like an elephant. And let's hope that memory of yours will come up with something concrete about this man. It'll help you and me and Sergeant Savala. Hey, that sergeant's a pretty nice fella for a cop. Oh, uh, present company accepted, as they say, Lieutenant. Something on your mind, Joe? I ain't no crybaby, Lieutenant. Pretty rough character, too. But I'm a sick man. Guess I earned it all right. But if you don't do something pretty soon, I don't figure it'll do me much good. With literally dozens of rental locker companies in the harbor area, Sergeant Zavala found the going a little rough with nothing but a vagrant combination to go on until he reached Cap Halverson's place. Yep. Do something for you, mate? Zavala, Sheriff's Office. Sheriff's Office? What do you want here? Your lockers, they work on combination or key locks? Well, the new ones, they work on combinations. But why? You ain't yet told me what you want here. Any of your lockers have this combination? Right 12, left 13, back to zero. Maybe. But why? What do you, what do we, what do you want? The name of the man who rents that locker? Well, Sorry if I'm putting you to any trouble, Mr. Halverson. Not Mr. Cap. Right there. Vincent Lamb. No address. Don't you get addresses from your lessees, Captain? Oh, all I get is the money in advance. You know, sailors with lockers are the same as sailors with women. They got one in every port. <laughs> know where I can find this Vincent Lamb? Well, seems to me he works a fishing boat. Uh, now, you might ask some of them down the pier. They might know. Before I do, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to open Lamb's locker for me. But I'm... Right around here. Hey. Oh, thanks. 
I'm sorry if I've caused you any trouble. Oh, it ain't no trouble. But you still haven't said just what you were looking for. Just making a little investigation. As a matter of fact, I'd appreciate it if you keep it confidential. Sure. Thank you. check with the proper authorities revealed that Vincent Lamb did operate a fishing boat, which bore the somewhat pointed name Jezebel. Besides this, they learned that Llewellyn Chandler, president of the company whose payroll had been stolen, had chartered Lamb's boat more than once. But finding the Jezebel was another and more difficult matter, with the thousands of small craft tied up in the bays and finger-like channels of the harbor. Or as Gina Marchetti had pointed out to Sergeant Zavala, Mr. Lamb could have taken the rest of the $22,000, shoved off, and by now could have been halfway to Mexico. Something, mister? Uh, why, yes. Well, I mean, I am, if you're the owner. I own it. Oh, swell. I uh, came down to see if I could arrange a charter for next week. Oh, I, I saw your boat from up there and thought I'd come down and inquire. I don't charter here. I book out of Catalina during the season. Well, but you're here now. Yeah, I'm here now. Repairs. Well, Catalina's fine and the price is okay. Where can I reach you? Well, I don't have a phone, and I don't know how long these repairs are going to take. Can I phone you wherever you're staying while you're over here? Well, I have a shack up behind Point Furman I use in the wintertime, but there's no phone there. Why don't you give me a business card, and I'll call you. Cards? I don't have any business cards. I never use them. What line are you in? Building supplies. Wholesale. Well, I tell you what, why don't you give me your address? Then I can send you a wire. No, you just call me down here on the pier. If I'm around, the boys will know where to find me. My name is Vince Lamb. Oh. Hi, Vince. All right, Zavala. Glad to know you. Say, if you got change of a 20, I gotta use the phone. Well, I always carry change for parking and phoning purposes. Help yourself. You can owe me. Diamond and nickel. Well, swell, Vince. I'll, uh, I'll be getting in touch with you. All right. Determined to find out where Vince Lamb lived, Sergeant Zavala took the harbor master into his confidence and soon had the address of the place up behind Point Furman, 12203 Palisades Drive. It wasn't too far from the pier, and if the 20-odd thousand in stolen money was there, Zavala would have had a fair day's work. Twelve two zero three Palisades Drive. Please notify Lieutenant Byrne. Tell him this is house belonging to payroll suspect, but it's way up on a cliff and it's dark. Ten four. Tell him I'll need some assistance. Ten four.
Lieutenant Byrne and Sergeant Hale arrived at the Palisades address just as Lamb was making his getaway. They followed immediately. Code 3. Meanwhile, Sergeants Cox and Walsh turned into Palisades Drive in response to Sergeant Zavala's call for assistance. On their way to the harbor, Lieutenant Byrne requested an emergency standby of a United States Coast Guard patrol boat. That's a big relief, Doctor. And tell Sergeant Savala something that should make him feel better. Tell him Lamb was our man. He had the payroll money on him. Uh-huh. Right. Oh, and there's something else you can tell him for me, Doctor. Just say that when I told him to get a slug from that 45 for evidence, I didn't think he'd be fool enough to bring it back for us a half inch under his heart. Right. Vincent Lamb was charged with assault with intent to commit murder, 
armed robbery, and first-degree murder. He is now in custody and awaiting trial. Joe Sontag pleaded guilty to armed robbery. After a thorough investigation by the probation officer, he was sentenced by an understanding judge to two years at the sheriff's honor ranch, where from all reports, his health, as well as his morals, improve each day. Now may I present Eugene W. Biscalus, Sheriff of Los Angeles County. Friends, during the production of the Code 3 films, a deputy sheriff is present at all times to assure you of the authenticity in our stories. We hope you'll join us again next week for another true case from our files. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.